Hey guys, welcome to downtown New York, Pennsylvania. That is Mr. Gimby. That is Mr. Grant. And that's Mr. Raymond. And this is the Marquis de Lafayette. Today we're standing in the colonial complex of the New York... Uh, Today we're standing in the York County Colonial Complex and we're going to talk to you about the Marquis de Lafayette. So Marquis is a European term for somebody who has a lot of money and wealth and the big truck that goes by there. <laughs> so Marquis is just a European title for somebody who is wealthy and has a lot of money and influence and power and that kind of stuff. And this guy did. He was so in love with the idea of America that he booked his own passage with his own money to come here to help the American cause and he asked for no money in return. All right, so George Washington and the Marquis de Lafayette had a really close relationship. George Washington didn't have any biological children of his own, so they sort of had a father and son relationship. And it was with the Marquis de Lafayette's help that they were able to secure French involvement in the War for Independence. So why a statue raising a glass? Well, the story goes that door, there's a big old truck coming. It's a 2004 Chevy Silverado. It's got a really cool front end. So why is he standing here in front of the Golden Plow Tavern in the Gates House raising a glass? Well, the story goes in the winter of 1777 and 1778, the Marquis de Lafayette was here in New York while Washington himself was freezing his tushy off in Valley Forge. You see, Washington was on a losing streak. He had literally just Washington was on a losing streak. He had lost New York. He had lost Philadelphia to the British and the Continental Congress had run for their lives here to York, Pennsylvania. And people began questioning whether or not Washington was the right guy to lead the revolution. Maybe Horatio Gates, who rented this house behind us, could possibly be the guy who should be leading our army, not George Washington, especially after he just captured 6,000 British soldiers at the Battle of Saratoga. So Thomas Conway, during this time, wasn't sure if Washington was the right man for the job to lead the Continental, our, Continental wasn't the Continental. So Thomas Conway led a coup to try to take Washington out of leadership from the army. But Marquis de Lafayette here supported Washington and he's raising a glass here in support of his friend Washington. Thus signifying that Lafayette and French support was behind Washington, not Horatio Gates. General Washington's going to find out about the cabal and he's not going to be happy about it. Horatio Gates is going <laughs> to... <laughs> I'm not happy about this. Not, I'm not happy. General Washington is going to find out about the cabal and he's going to be very upset about it. Horatio Gates is going to be forced to apologize and Thomas Conway is going to... <laughs> <laughs> he's going to rep his 1996 Mustang. Once General Washington found out about the Conway cabal, he was very upset about it. Horatio Gates is going to be forced to apologize to Washington and Thomas Conway is going to resign from the military. If that's not bad enough for Thomas Conway, Washington encouraged his supporters to challenge Conway Conway to a duel, which eventually resulted in Thomas Conway getting shot in the mouth. <laughs> That's not a good day. No. <laughs> so next time you're in York County, Pennsylvania, stop down here at the Colonial Courthouse, visit Lafayette, raise a glass to George Washington, and take in all the history. That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Raymond. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. <laughs> I can't do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So that's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. And we're here with the Marquis de Lafayette. You guys take it easy. <laughs>